Let's take a look at the requirements for the design document that is due at the end of module 3. I'll go over each of the elements that have to be in the design document. So under scope of project, we're looking at the goal of this whole training module as such. So you will state that in one or two sentences. There are videos on how to write goals and objectives. I suggest you check that out when you're writing the goal. So the goal is an overarching aim of this particular training module. Now audience, you talked about the audience in detail in your needs analysis. You're now going to explain it a little briefly, more specifically in this section. Design time and milestones. How long do you think it will take to design this training module and what are the deliverable milestones for example in one month you will have completed um, maybe all the printed materials um, in month two you will have the lesson plan ready and in month three you will conduct the program so you can decide how you want to identify your milestones but that's what you're doing over here and the length of the course itself so you you're all identifying one training module one module right so how long is that going to be now the length of a module can be whatever you want it to be and some of you have already identified it in your needs analysis so for your particular training module, how long does it need to be? Is it going to be a four hour workshop? Is it going to be a one hour workshop? That's what you're thinking about over here. Okay. Then we come to the delivery information. How will you actually provide this training? So content, what is the content that you're going to cover in your training module? Briefly, it doesn't have to be very detailed over here again method um, is it going uh, if it's face to face is it going to be a workshop is it going to be a lecture kind of thing is it going to be in a classroom is it going to be in a particular location that kind of thing would be method the training time is similar to length of course now the difference here is length of courses if you have multiple modules you want to talk about the whole course as such training time would be just for one module in this instance they'd probably be the same what are the problems and opportunities these are the constraints and current resources that you identified in your needs analysis but specifically with how you're going to deliver this particular training module now, when we come to objectives, the objectives get a little more specific than the goal. And again, check the videos on writing goals and objectives because writing a good objective is very important. Your whole training module depends on the objectives you write. I will be looking at alignment between your objectives, activities, and your assessments later. So make sure you have good objectives. And remember, objectives are identified from the learner perspective, as in at the end of this module, the learner will be able to and make sure you have measurable objectives. What are the materials you will need for conducting your training? And then we look at who is involved in developing this training and delivering this training. So sometimes you might need some kind of media person to create some materials for you. Or you might have some um, subject matter expert who needs to be consulted. You might actually have two or three facilitators. So who are the people involved in creating this particular training module? Then you give a topical outline. So within your module itself, what are the different topics you're going to cover? Administration and evaluation. Here the focus is more on the evaluation. How will you evaluate the success of this training module? Is it going to be a, a survey that you distribute at the end? Is it going to be something that you post to them later? How are you going to evaluate it is the question here. And then we look at cost analysis. Now, remember in our readings, we looked at how important cost is. 
because that is the final deciding factor on whether a training module occurs or not. So here we try to break down the different elements of cost. And doing this in a table might be easier for you to do your calculations, but I leave it up to you. And again, there is no definite number here. Um, Piscuric in his book, Rapid ID, gives you some general ballpark figures that you could use. But the idea over here is I want to be able to see how you thought through the process rather than the precise numbers that you came up with. And then finally, links. This is um, if you are accessing materials from other places, those links you will provide over here. Now for the design document, the way I grade it is going to be very simple. Have you addressed each of these elements in sufficient detail? And if you have, that's a full point. And then if there are some elements that are missing or completely absent, then you're graded based on that. So it's a very simple, straightforward 20 point grading for this particular design document.